There we go. So if you don't have a paper, if you don't have a ruler and you're drawing, you're going to be folding your paper once, twice, three times. A lady. Four. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> four times so that when you open it up you've got 16 equal rectangles um if you have a ruler you're going to take your pencil if you're doing a pencil or watercolor and you're going to measure the the uh, each side to find the halfway point so in this particular case i have a centimeter ruler and an inch ruler i switch them back and forth the long side of a standard uh eight and a half by 11 inch paper uh, in centimeters is 28, which is a really easy thing to split in half. Of course, 28, half of 28 is 14. And then I'm gonna find the halfway point of each of these. So half of 14 is seven. And then another seven is 21. So I'm, I'm marking in this particular case, I happen to finally get a centimeter ruler I'm using centimeters on the long side. So once again, I'm doing it at the top here too, 14, seven. Now these numbers might be different if you're using a different size of paper. So don't necessarily listen to the numbers I'm using, more get the principle of the halfway point, the halfway point and the halfway point. You can see I'm lining up my ruler and I'm measuring. All right, and then the short side doesn't really work for centimeters, believe it or not, works better with inches. So this is um, eight and a half. So that's 4.25. And then half of 4.25 is 2.2. I'm going to move down here and do the same thing or whatever you're halfway. You might be working with a nine by 12, you know, so that means your measurements are going to be different. But you like us to leave a little space, right? Um, I like you to have a place to test. You don't have to do it on the same paper. You can give yourself another sheet of paper. I just do this because I have these big sheets, 12 by 16, and I I usually only want an eight by 10 inch you know, paper. So I've marked out my eight by 10 inch paper. I can do my testing right on it, but you can do your testing anywhere. Okay. Leah? Yeah. Did you send this by email? I, I sent it to WhatsApp. Oh, what's that? Yeah, I sent it back to WhatsApp about two hours ago. So the color version is there. And we have a single thread for Sunday art class now. Yep, we do. Are, are you not on it? Maybe you're not on it. Hold on, let me see if I can need to add you, Rebecca. Uh, I will add you in one second. So you guys go ahead and finish your sketch. Let me, you know, it's possible that you've been gone long enough. We now have a single thread that's all the time for Sunday art class. So it never changes. Let me look here, see if you're on it. You are not on it. I'm going to add you right now. So I'm going to add you and then send it over so you can see it. Leah, I love this picture. Isn't it awesome? <laughs> Somebody said reindeer, and I was like, yes. <laughs> and they're very weird looking creatures. Like, you will find. How's that, Rebecca? You got it now? Yeah, I got it. Awesome. Okay. Um, so one of the things I want to talk about uh, in when we are starting to draw, because I noticed a lot of students had problems with this when they tried to paint it. So drawing is gonna be key in this lesson. And one of those things is this idea, I'm gonna sketch this in, that the reindeer head, let's see, it's like this, really has, it's almost like a cube. Right. So people often forget that there is a side and a top of the reindeer face. And so they either don't leave space here and the eye winds up down here. So I, I'd like you to try and sketch in this box. So if you're doing this, 
without, um, if you're doing this without a grid, I want you to sketch in very lightly in pencil this box too. So does everybody understand what I did here? This is where there are plane changes in the face. So this part of the reindeer is coming closest to us. So it is in its own, it's like putting a, it's like going like this, right? The fist, the, the front of the fist is coming towards you. The arm is farther back. This is the side of the reindeer's face and this is the top of the nose. So this little box is gonna help you kind of remember that there are plane changes. And the other thing to really pay attention to here is this shape, the shape of the ears. And I want you to look at this, not only in relation to, and particularly if you're not using a grid, you're eyeballing, I want you to notice like, A, how much further down this back ear is from the front and how much bigger this ear is than this one. So there's this tendency to try and equalize things to make the ears the same size. Right, but that's not what's really happening. So before you sketch out, and I'll show you what I mean by this, but before you sketch out uh, the reindeer's head, I want you to sketch out these shapes. And remember that this shape also should be in relationship to this shape. So for example, the height from here to here is the same as the length of the nose, basically. Can you see that? This length is the same as the length from here to here. So as we, we're gonna establish this line first, and then we're gonna go back. There's more, but that's not it. That's not the only foreshortening that's happening here. We also have what's in front here, the front half of the reindeer and the back half of the reindeer. And I want you to notice something. The whole back half of the reindeer is not as big as the front. It's not as wide as the front. Why is that? Anybody know? Farther Can back. Explain it? What? Because it's farther back. Right. So it's farther back. And what happens when things go farther back? They get smaller. Right. What else happens? Notice what's happening here. These lines are not, the feet are not in the same place. Although if we were to look at this antelope, uh, this, uh, this, this guy from the, sorry, this reindeer from the side, right? His feet would be lined up perfectly, but they aren't from this angle because as things, <laughs> this is the trick of perspective, as things, just like a road, you know, how we learn to draw a road in school, how as the road goes away from us, it not only gets smaller, it rises up the paper. Because we, of course, cannot draw back. We only have a flat surface. So angles, at, the reason this looks like his legs are farther away and this whole back half is smaller than this half is because this guy, this part of his body is farther away from us. Oh, his legs are shorter. They aren't. Yeah, they are, but they aren't. Right? Right, right. In reality, they're the same right. size, but yes, everything is going to be smaller. So we're going to, when we construct, we're thinking of two boxes, really. There is this box in which his back half fits, and there's this box, which, which is it, his front half fits. And then, of course, there are these guys. Let us not forget these guys. But it, it, it's really interesting. People will get caught up in doing this and they will totally forget about that side. They'll forget about this. They'll try to make these guys feet line up the same way. They'll try to make the ears the same size and they'll wonder what's going on. So it's very important when you're starting to construct something to see based on the angle that is coming at, what, how can I break this up into pieces which make it easier to construct? Does that make sense? Yes. Everybody? Yes. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to take a picture of this. And so that you guys have it, because it may be tricky or you're I'm going to bring it down here for a second for you to see it. And then I will start sketching it. I'm going to do what I I'm going to try eyeballing it. And we'll see what happens. I thought you didn't approve of eyeballing. Well, it's interesting. Somebody asked me 
last class it was Melissa, I think. We talked about what I meant by that. I noticed that eyeballing is usually a lazy person's way of saying, I don't want to measure. I'm just going to guess. But real eyeballing means like, I'm going to actually check everything against everything else, right? Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So, I was teasing be... you. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in the zone got it all right so let's see here i'm gonna get a pencil and i'm gonna start sketching so this kind of fairly simple subject has a lot of like planes have a lot of plane changes so one of the first things of correct eyeballing right is that i can see that this guy let's see yeah, I'm not going to be able to put the whole thing there, but I can like kind of put them a little bit this way. I want you to be able to see my drawing too. I can see that he's, uh, the front half of him is kind of at the halfway point. So I'm going to find the halfway point of my paper right now. Right, so I know when I start sketching that here is where he, he the front part of him is kind of in, and I might even start With hey, these Leah, shapes. Yes. Where you can center just a little more so we can see the photo with the drawing. You want to see the photo with the drawing? I I could try. Hold on. Yeah, as as close as possible. I know it's hard. It's um possible. Let's see what we can do. It's better. I know. Hang on. I got that. And I can. There's a couple of other things I can do here. All right. There we go. You'll see here I've got, oh, perfect, almost perfect. Well, at least we can't see this last part, but you guys know it's here. All right, so let me sketch this again. So I'm gonna find the halfway point. Here. I'll try to draw it strongly so you can see it. And then I know that this half, this part of the legs here is kind of, and I'm actually going to sketch this little balloon. You're the best. <laughs> we're trying, we're trying. <laughs> I can also see that the halfway point is kind of where his nose starts. So the other thing I'm going to do is find the halfway point going up. All right, one, two. We'll go over a lot of this in beginning drawing, but we might as well talk about it here. Wait, that's not right. It's up higher. Yeah, okay. So I know that when I come up to about here, and I have no problem with drawing this little balloon, so I'm not even starting with the legs. I'm kind of starting with the body around the legs and then i'm kind of moving to this spot here and then let's do it i'm going to go here and up and then down i'm kind of guessing at this point i'm going to actually sketch out the face so see i'm actually sketching out that shape I'm gonna sketch it in and then I'm gonna see, did I get it right or do I need to correct? If I wanna get this shape particularly right, this is a little bit more angled out. This side is less so. It's, they're not going at parallel. They're kind of going kind of away from each other. Mm. Let's see. I think I've already probably mucked this up, but we'll see. I may have to move this whole thing up. In fact, you know what? I'm pretty sure. Well, let's see. One, two. Well, let me just have to bring this up a little bit. One, two, one, two. I think I need to bring this down a little bit. So 
So I want you to really see this. This is real artistic process at work. This is not, I'm practicing this so I can look like I know that this is effortless and easy. This is me trying to show you, if I was to sit down and do this, this is what I'm, you know, this is me trying to show you how that looks. And also notice how easy it is to um, make things too big. So you see how I automatically kind of stretched up here. Let's see, so one, yep, that's exactly right. So what I did was I checked here, you can see over here, hold on that this kind of comes up to the halfway point between these halves. So I had made it go up too high. I made it go up a little bit farther than that. So even though this feels so huge to me, it's not really in relation to the other things. All right, now, and I'm not worried about the horns. The horns are gonna be the last thing I add in, although I'm leaving the space for the horns. So I'm making sure that I have at least one head space up for the horns, so from here to here. So if I, if I don't have enough room on my paper, then that means I don't have enough room for my horns. So this is real eyeballing. This is, and if I'm gonna be really exacting, let's do this too. This is the front, which means this has to move over a little bit. Right, because it has to be, this is the front half of the, of the reindeer. Notice how I'm constantly adjusting. Mostly I'm doing that as I add things in and see it say, oh, okay, I'm thinking I need this space here to be, and in reality, I probably, can I get away with that? I might have to move this whole thing over a little bit because I need more space. So perhaps I should have started with this line, which is on this side so that I know where to put my head. Interesting, isn't it? Okay, if there's a shape here, then that means this goes here. There we go, that goes here. And see how quickly I can make these corrections? Quite simply, because uh, I'm still just working with outlines. Mm-hmm, interesting, yep, that's what's happening. Uh, I think that's too big, one, two, it's not too big. Let's come down a little bit. Yeah, and his eye is going to be kind of up in here, right? He's got a big eye, oh, and it's going to be in a bit more. I shouldn't get too into the eyes. Don't don't pay attention to that. That was a bad. That was a bad like trace off. So now my front part, all of which is in is in this section of the paper, the second half of the paper. Now I have this space. I can just move this over. So this is the front half of our dude in squares. And then the back half, what I know is that the back half is, you can see how I'm measuring here. The back half is about as wide as the front half up to the edge of the face. So the back half doesn't go any further than this. So my back half is like right. 
I know that this line will line up kind of with here, a little bit above here. So you see nothing, as I'm laying things down, nothing is really left to chance. And that feels so much smaller to me than it should be, but that's really kind of the shapes, the outer shapes. <laughs> Maybe a little bit further. And I don't think I quite have these shapes right. But I'm thinking about this space right here, right in between. So I'm not just thinking about. So this, like when we're starting to construct things, it's almost like we're getting ready to carve out of marble, right? We're thinking about our drawing in blocks. I think that's probably right. And then I can sketch out the kind of outer shape of my antlers. They're gonna come in here like that. It so doesn't, if you're not used to drawing like this, it does not feel natural at first. After a while, you will not be able to understand why anyone can draw it any other way. You will see why people make constantly are making mistakes. Still, yeah, still good. See, I can kind of eke this out a little bit if I'm like, oh, it needs to be a little bit longer, but not so much. I can check some things like what's the length between the front and the back legs. It's about to here, so I can check a few front. Uh -huh. This might be a little too far out. Maybe this needs to come out just a little bit further. Everything is in relation to everything else. Is anybody's head exploding in a good way, bad way? <laughs> Does this seem logical? Of course, if you've got your grid, it's a little bit easier to guess where things are. So that is also helpful. Uh, at this point, you're going to want to put in your background. Unfortunately, the background's fairly simple. That's all we really need right now for the background. Let me take a picture of that. Go ahead and send, so I'm gonna send a picture of what I've got so far. And then let's do this. Yeah, so I'm gonna take a picture of this. So you've got these, no, oh, come here. You've got this guy. And then you've got this guy. Let's see if I can get far enough back to get the whole thing. It's going to be hard to do that. Let's see. Bro, uh, Rosa, look at this shape here. Mm -hmm. You've got this too far this way. Bring it a little bit wider. Got it. And then look at what that, this, this shape is much bigger, mm -hmm. about twice the size of what you have it. Look at the relationship. Because this part is coming down in front. Mm -hmm. Good. Good, good, good. We need to get you a ruler. <laughs> <laughs> That's our next step. This is good. Otherwise, and this also, notice this also comes out a bit farther. Okay. Yeah. And the, and the ear is bigger. I think I'm going to start printing these out. I just got a printer. So. <laughs> awesome. Printer is helpful. It's true. And also, yes, having it with you. 
But also what's happening, Rosa, is that you're starting to acclimate to what's actually, what the spaces are actually taking up in on the paper. And that is just different, but mm -hmm. I get you. It's easier to get everything coming through. Let's see, Marcel. Oh, that's very nice. Let's see. I think you've dipped in a little bit too far here. Oh, I did, you're right. And his nose is way wider. It's not square, it's really rectangular. And that it's bigger because it's really coming towards us like a punch, right? Like a fist. Yeah, good call. Uh -huh. Hey, um, also, I just, I drew it, I think probably a little too tall. So instead of erasing everything, I want the antlers to just go off the paper, probably. Um, let me look and see if there's a better, good, good job, by the way. Um, just bring his head down a little bit. Think? Yeah. I'm looking at this to this. So this leg should be as tall as to here. Can you see this? How I'm doing this. So from here to here, uh -huh. this leg uh -huh. should come up to the top of his head. So uh -huh. just, and then, and then one more, two, three. So if you can divide your paper into thirds, actually, uh -huh. you can probably just correct head and body and legs and uh -huh. still, can, and still fit everything in. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. All right, let's see. Um, Rosa. So nice drawing, guys. Great. Emma, great. How's it feel? Are you taking any art classes, Emma? Yeah, um, I'm taking a ceramic class next semester, but oh, we do lots of you. like, um, yeah, we're doing lots of drawing stuff. Yeah. And it's kind of nice just because I have a little bit more foundation than. Right. Than yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, Pat, really wonderful construction here. I want you to look at. Um, I want you to look at this shape here. It's not curved like that. It's kind of more of an angle. Okay. Uh, diagonal and over. Um, and also notice you have the body way too far up. You have it up here quick compared to the grid. This line should oh, be oh. down okay. much farther. Okay. Great job, you guys. <laughs> Melissa surging ahead. Melissa, there's too much space between, look at this shape here. Your legs are too far back. So you want a shape that is exactly the same the space between this foot and this leg should be the same as like, oh, wow, look at that. So, oh, so a couple of things, Melissa. One is that your feet are way too small and your legs are way too small. The legs in the front need to be bigger because they are in front. So um, the width of this should be the space between here. So your I legs in the back are too far. And I, I feel like... This is all looking great. Oh, you need to bring this guy, you need to bring this guy down a bit. You need to bring this shape down. It's, you have it too far up. I see it. That's why he looks so skinny. So check this measurement against like- uh, hey, It's too long. Your leg. No, it's too short. I see the whole body is too long. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see it. Thanks. It's not like, um, you know, we all want to race. Everybody does it. You'll notice I screwed up this. Oh, wait. Okay. There's nobody under like 13 here. So I can say I fucked up this drawing three times right in front of you before I got it right. So be careful not to charge ahead without like really thinking about the construction of where everything is and how things fit in relation to each other. It's such an interesting thing. I find the mind bending of drawing like so, like I'm still like, really? <laughs> That's how big that thing is? It's not this big, it's that big. And it's not even consistent. Like sometimes I have things way too small and sometimes I have, to, sometimes I have things way too big. A kind of general rule of thumb is anything that's coming towards you, anything here is bigger. So anything uh, in, the, in the flat, arena, that means anything that's kind of in the foreground, which is in the bottom part of the paper, right? 
like this part, the top part is the stuff that's farthest away. But anything that comes into this bottom plane of the paper who's attached to the bottom part of the paper, that is the thing that's closest to you. Um, let me show you guys just quickly because it's easy. Let me see if I can grab this quickly and show you. It's very similar to handling foreshortening with a person. Let me pull this up. Let's see, where can I find it? I knew this would be a good thing to get us sort of practiced on drawing. Ah, here it is. Okay. So if you stop for a second, I'm gonna I'm gonna unspotlight myself so I can share with you. Let me find Zoom again. Take a look at this. The same thing is happening here. Do you guys remember this? Uh -huh. Yeah, you remember this? So uh, here's what's interesting about this. Although this is attached to this butt, right? This is all one body. Um, this thing here, this arm here is we, we sketch this in first and then everything else is in relation to this shape because this is what's coming towards us. Everyone, almost everybody, when they initially sketched this, drew this way too big, way too wide. If you look at it, it's about half the size of the fist. This whole side of the body, arm and part of the torso there, it's like not even the width of the fist. Mm -hmm. So, Leah, do you, you mentioned having a ruler. Are you understanding that just by doing your finger pinch measurement or are you? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm doing with the ruler. Well, yes, the ruler is more to just to draw the grid. Okay. Yeah, really the ruler is just simply to draw the grid. Although the ruler helps if you want to check measure. And if you're doing a one-to-one -one transmission, Mm -hmm. right? then and I still feel like this might not be good enough, but if you're doing a one-to-one -one transmission, you might be able to like actually measure what's the length from here to here. But yeah, I'm usually with my fingers, but I find this to be a little fallible. I sometimes, if I wanted to, I will like find myself squishing my finger up and then <laughs> I'm like, it's just amazing how much we want to shortcut this part of the process. I was talking to Melissa just uh, a couple of days ago about how boring I find art sometimes. And uh, boring is a, can be a very um, loaded term. I really don't mean it as loaded. I mean it more like it's tedious. There is a tedium to doing this work and we always wanna try and skip it, right? We want to like, just be able to get in and start doing our thing. But if we don't do this, and so it's kind of like owning the boredom. Like owning, yeah, there's a little bit of tedium and do this. And, and I do this because I know if I do this, I'm gonna have that joy of having a drawing that feels right mm -hmm. at the end. It's like working out. Like who really actually enjoys that? <laughs> <laughs> I, really, I mean, really at the end of the day, we all know we have to do it, but like who really enjoys it? Anybody enjoy it? I don't really enjoy it. I mean, I kind of enjoy I don't know. Maybe sort of. I don't know. <laughs> um, doing great work, by the way, guys. Uh, let me get in our second set of uh, lines. And if I can, I'll try with gold. So I'm now trying to pay attention to the darks, mediums, and the lights in here particularly important, right? For, I see some of you have already gone there. Notice how big the feet are. The feet are huge in the front. They're massive. The eye and the ear on this side are really big too. 
Well, that wasn't very visible. Let's see. Hey, Marcel, can you ever do Saturday workshops? Anything is possible. Awesome. So what I want to do is start with a Saturday uh, watercolor workshop. Oh yeah, you also. I don't know if I'm the if I'm the minority. Don't worry about me. I can. You always... are just right. Just right now, honestly, it's just because we haven't kind of opened it up yet. It's good for me to do other mediums too. So I'm I'm totally open. Okay, great. But I, I, you know, what I noticed and what's really helpful is um, for you and Catherine and, and Jessica, who really want this work, it helps me to remind myself that there are people, there's a lot of people who want watercolor. We just have to find them, get them and drag them into class. <laughs> we'll see. I'm doing some adver uh, targeted advertising. So we'll see how that comes out as well. So notice now I'm still kind of, boy, this ear is just, just remember you guys, this ear is huge on this side. And the eye needs this much space. It's a big eye. And notice how I'm also using, um, I'm also using my shapes here to kind of carve out. So if I, let's see if I can sketch this in so you can see this. So I can do this and that, right? I can do the eye. I'm just drawing the heck out of this thing. Notice also this part is not centered. This is not a centered thing. It's almost like a yin yang. Half is white and half is, you know, half is dark. I'm bringing my, this out this way and I'm bringing this in this way. So when I add in my dark, it's so amazing how much the mind will want to find patterns, even if they don't exist. It's like really our left brain is totally useless for this process. The left brain doesn't like that. The left brain's used to being very useful. It's like, I don't know, a Jewish mother or something. <laughs> You know, like once your kids start growing up and you're like, wait. <laughs> I am sketching in, I mean, a lot of the, the top of this, uh, this guy is um, dark, but I'm still trying to sketch out the major major kind of connections here. You'll notice that this bottom shape can kind of stay in for his jawline, the bottom of the jawline here that comes in. What else is helpful? I need to bring that in a little bit. Now, yeah. really the foot is as big as the nose. So each foot in the front is as big as the nose. Yep. Also, look at where that foot is in relation. See what I mean by tedious and awful? <laughs> like, oh my God, this is so. Notice also that this leg is not a straight line. There's actually a couple of bumps. So if you guys remember our work with figure drawing, and if not, we'll get another chance to do this for a couple of months in the summer. Remember how we had the round joints right in the center and the top part of the leg would go here and then there was a knee and then the bottom part kind of went here and it gets in and out and i don't even know if these are 
right? I know I may have made this a little bit too big. So the first thing I'm going to check is if my leg should go up to just over my eye. Okay, that's working. There is a, a there is a space in between that's as important as the legs themselves. We often forget that. Okay, I can already tell this is too much. I'm getting there. So yeah, it's like we're constantly measuring, 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 measuring. Uh, Emma, so is is this right? Are you going into architecture? Yeah, I am. Well, Melissa, maybe Melissa has some advice for you. Melissa has been an architect for 20 years, Melissa? Yeah, something like that. 20 years, and she's just going out on her own, running her own firm. Yeah. Wow, what's exciting. Do you like it? Yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's a good career. There's, you know, it gets tedious too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's not as much art. I wish there was, so that's why I'm doing it on the side. There's a lot of computer work. Okay. Yeah. Melissa is shares a, is a jeweler as well. True. Um, and she shares, so she does a lot of different artistic stuff, and also a watercolorist, wonderful painter, watercolorist, I think in particular. So you see how I'm still kind of blocking these out. I'm treating the top here. Okay. I'm gonna quickly notice that the back leg is kind of farther in, kind of comes to about here. It's mostly hidden by this front leg. Embrace the tedium. We get okay, and then I can see there's these shapes here. Let me sketch these in. You guys, if I'm not giving you enough instruction as I'm doing something, tell me. I figure you're kind of watching as I'm doing. I'm basically outlining the um the dark medium and light shapes right so that i can preserve my lights for watercolor there we go that's pretty good and, and has anybody noticed how weird the toes are yeah it's going be crazy i have no idea how to draw these things look <laughs> at the shapes so weird <laughs> look at the shapes don't think about them. So it's whenever you're like, I don't know how to draw this, look at the light, medium, and dark shapes. That's always what it comes down to. That's the greatest thing about art. It has nothing to do with what the thing is. It's just the shapes. Rosa, weren't you saying that in the last class that all you were doing was just kind of paying attention to shapes? Yeah, that's where I left off um, in the art class I was taking like right before the pandemic. And so right. all this stuff about perspective is like exactly what I <laughs> missed out on because we were just focused on pulling out shapes um, and pulling out like uh, the gradient of colors. Right, but it's all the same thing. So we'll mm -hmm. continue to go back to this because perspective is a many tentacle beast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, it's a bitch. <laughs> it is it is such a bitch and the reason it's a bitch is that it's really hard um because absolutely you have to know the rules of it's like a, a understanding that to show something what something looks like uh in our cone vision on a flat surface things need to go in different places than we think they do mm -hmm. And that's like really hard to wrap your mind around. For example, that these legs and these feet and this nose in the front are so much bigger than anything happening back here. 
right? Mm -hmm. And that's just simply because they're farther away. That these legs rise up, not because he's standing on a stone, he's standing on flat ground, but as things go away, right, they get smaller. So there's all these things that you have to know and then you forget. <laughs> You, by the way, can make your background as simple or as complex as you like. Here I'm adding in the mountains. Let's see here. It's a little bit this way so you guys can see that. And is anybody planning on being here next week? Or are y'all gonna take off for holidays? I'm happy to teach a class, but I'm also happy to not teach a class if people would like a break before we jump into painting, acrylic painting. Yeah, I probably will not. Okay. Who said that, Marsa? Okay. Is anybody, I should say, is anybody planning on being to class next week? I think I'm gonna take it off too. That is okay. I'll tell you what, let me know on the thread if you plan to be in class next week. If nobody plans to be here, then we'll just, um, then we will take that class off. And if, and if some people want to be here, then I'll totally teach. So this is how simple, here, let me take a picture of this. Oh, hello, nine-year-old visitor. Very nice. Uh, much better, Melissa. Great, great, great. Yes, feet are great. Uh-huh. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, his back is sloping a little bit more. It's more straight across, believe it or not. And then it kind of comes down. You have him going like that. Very nice. Emma, let's see. Excellent. Let's see from here to here. Good job. Good job, Emma. That looks good to me. Ah, there you go, Marcel. Looks good. Um, I feel a little bit like his back legs are too far away, but let me measure that just to make sure. Space, space. So the space between, I think you need to bring his back legs in just a little bit. Uh -huh. Okay. Or so. Just a little, scooch him a little bit this way. Good, Pat. Great construction. Try not to color in so much, Pat, because we're going to okay. use paint there and we don't, the lead will just get in the way of your... Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I know. Here, let me take a picture of this so you can see the, yeah, yeah. No. There you go. That one's mine. Oh no, that wasn't any good. Here, wait, wait, can you, no, dang it. Here, I'm gonna pull this down for just a second so I can get a full picture of it in one minute. There you go. There's the thing next to the thing. Mm -hmm. In pretty good shape. I may bring his, let's see. That shape isn't right, is that right? 
it's funny how you take a picture of it and you're like, okay, now I can see. No, actually, that's, that shape's pretty good. I think I'm going to bring up the jawline just a little bit. So what I noticed people did, and I, I did this in another class, uh, and what I noticed immediately was everyone lost this shape. Everyone, every single person. And I'm like, but it's there even in the grid. It's like, uh, if it doesn't have something that we find interesting, we just ignore it. <laughs> like, let's see here. Okay, and of course, those of you who are working in pencil will just continue doing the lights and darks, getting the shapes. Rosa, you may want to try flipping the source and your drawing upside down at some point. Yep. Right? Uh, I want everybody to get their drawing in order. And in the meantime, I'm starting to look at colors for painting. So what shape were people missing? This shape. Oh, I gotcha. This shape. It was just like eyes would be down here. <laughs> over here. Like it's like there was no side of his face at all. Right? And you can see why. I think I'm gonna move. Well, that box seems to come straight down from the, the angle of, the, of that ear. The what? The the box that contains the nose seems to come straight down from the angle of the ear. It does. It does. Good observation. I owe it all to you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> In the meantime, I, while you guys are doing this, I'm going to start looking at. I've got this on its side because we're going to be doing some testing mixing first. Let's see. I'm going to pull up the photo just so we've got it to look at it. These are very subtle colors. So I think we're just going to need some more bright sienna. going to be a study in browns and blues, maybe a little bit of red, a touch of ochre. I'm not really anticipating much more. There's a sweet little pinkness to that sunset though, so maybe a little bit of pink. Recording this, Leah? Yep, absolutely. Okay. I'm not feeling very well. So Do you want to stop and just I'll send you the recording later? Yeah, and I'll just or just watch this. without doing. Uh, no, I, I need to lay down. Okay, you got it. But thanks. Go okay. lay down. Okay. I'll send Bye -bye. it to you. Beautiful.
Anyway, Emma, what I know from watching Melissa, great artistic mind, is that architecture is a great, um, is a great uh, sort of day job for you. It's a great day job. If you, you can still entirely do art. Melissa has done art the entire time. And there's so much art in what she does, like as an architect. Much respect. Yeah. I admire you, Melissa. <laughs> this thing is really awesome, what you, you do. You definitely have to seek out creativity in, in other ways and not lose that, I think, in architecture because you get caught up on the computer a lot. Mm -hmm. But um, it, yeah, you, you can prioritize art. And I think that that's something that you have to do in any case. You know, if any, you're doing any career. Yeah, and a creative job is fun. So, I mean, you can't knock that if you, you get paid to do some, some creativity every now and then, that's fun. I mean, it's also a lot of code research. So it's not all, it's all not all fun and games. Not, not, neither is any job, right? <laughs> right? But I don't mind code research, I mean, I mean, I, I find it interesting, so. I think for me, the, the, there is that sort of tiringness of, okay, I've got to make sure everything's in the right places and I've got to draw the outer lines, but then you get more and more excited as your painting comes to a finish, right? So as, even as we get to this stage, it's like, oh, that's so awesome. Look, my reindeer is looking like a reindeer. It's looking like not just a reindeer, it's looking like that reindeer. So that's the payoff all the time. Well, watching a building get built is so awesome. I mean, from your drawings, that's so awesome. It's like seeing some people, all the different construction workers working together to build these, you know, this image that you had in your head. It's really cool. I can't that, even, oh, so it's cool. That's the coolest part. You know, the work when you're not doing the work anymore and other people are doing all the work and, and you have so much, you know, I have so much appreciation for contractors because they know so much, so many different things than I do to make, you know, it takes so many people to have a building come together. Yeah. And, um, and I think that's really neat. You, you get to see all the different trades and understand how it comes together. It's kind of like being in theater, right? If you're a playwright or an actor, Right. There's all these people involved in making the show go on. Yeah, can you repeat the colors again, please? Uh, yep. Um, the colors that I see in this particular piece are burnt umber, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, ochre, yellow ochre, and uh, permanent or quinacridone red or rose. So kind of a, or, or alizarin crimson, a kind of cool red, but a pink, but quinacridone rose or permanent rose would be the best. And let me actually lay those out while we're, so here is, I'm just gonna lay this out. Here is burnt umber. Here, I'll just write it down. This is burnt umber. And I'll send a picture of this, Jessica, so you have it. You don't have to memorize everything. Burnt sienna. I never used to do this. Anybody who's been with me very long knows how how much I did not do this. I really appreciate Marie and Melissa and all the people who just do this automatically, show their colors, because I think it's really helpful. I don't know why it never occurred to me to do it before, but I think it's really helpful. This is If you've got, um, like a darker blue, like, um, a Prussian blue or a Payne's gray, that also could be helpful. I 
I don't think we'll need any colors. We may need more, but we'll see as we go through. And these are the five colors we'll need. I think the yellows that we're going to need are going to be muted. That's just my sense. We may add, end up bringing more in later. Oh, What's that? Yellow did you use? Uh, yellow ochre. Here, I'm going to take a picture and send it over so you guys have it. New Gamboge would be a... Eh, new Gamboge is a little bright. If that's the only thing you have, yes, but I think it's a little too bright for this. You want something a little bit more... Ideally, you'd want something more muted, but of course, use what you've got. Oh, burnt sienna. Uh, burnt sienna is on the list. Here. Raw. Raw. Burnt sienna is on, uh, raw sienna, no, too green. <laughs> there we go. Okay, sending the colors across. I mean, if all you have is new gamboge, put it down but use it lightly. If we use it, you're gonna use it very lightly. It's gonna to be too dramatic. The colors here are super subtle. It's gonna be a lot of blending and a lot of mixing. So I just sent across the colors. Let's see. Mm. Oh. I'll tell you what, um, Marcel, we had so much fun with the sailboat that we're probably going to do sailboats for the first workshop. <laughs> I lived on a sailboat for five years. You did? You should. Can you send us some pictures? Sure. We'll paint that. Yeah, sorry to miss it. I oh, no, that's okay. Um, but I'm just, we'll do more. It was really fun. And people did amazing. <laughs> really amazing. Actually, if you go back on the thread, you might be on the thread. I was. Yeah, so you can see what everybody did. It was incredible, actually. Yeah, it was full on. We were all working the entire, <laughs> this entire thing was all covered with testing marks just completely. But uh, everybody did amazing. So I think we're gonna try more subject matter like that. And if you send me some of your pictures, then we'll do some of those. We'll definitely do, do one for painting in January too. How was that like? How was what? What was it like living on the sailboat? Oh my gosh, it was amazing. I, it was in um, Olympia up in Washington. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I was working full time, but we just lived off the boat. Um, a really, where were you moored? Where were you moored? There's a marina. There's several marinas up there right in mm -hmm. town, but mm -hmm. the one we stayed at was called Swan Town. Yeah, I know Swan Town. My oh. dad used to have a boat there. Oh, sweet! It's gorgeous. Yeah, it is gorgeous. <laughs> Since I mean, you know, any of the marinas are totally in absolutely beautiful locations up in Olympia. Um, it's actually, you're right, probably one of the nicest places to be in Olympia. Yeah. So beautiful. Well, do you still have that boat? I don't. We still don't. Oh.
Leah, where you see yellow, is that in his coat? Yeah, it's blended with other things. Uh -huh. There may be points where we're gonna yellow up. Uh, what I see is a lot of browns, the burnt siennas and the burnt umbers mixed with blue. And then yeah. in a couple places, I see a little bit of yellow in there. Yeah, do you see it? Okay, looking pretty good, Jessica. Yep, looking good. I think his eye is a little bit bigger and the ear is a little bit bigger. Look at the relationship, Jessica, of the eye to the ear. Okay. All right. And then let's get, let's spend five more minutes on the drawing and then we're going to start working on the color mixing. You can continue to go back to drawing if you want to. Melissa, that looks great. Nice work. Okay. Moosey, moosey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, interestingly, as, as with the last couple of assignments, the colors that we, that are, are the sort of dark color is, is going to be a similar mix to the one we've done before. So I'm going to start here with my basic go-to dark, which is a little bit of, oh, oh wait, and let me get my blankie. What is my blankie? I call it my blankie because you'll find yourself gripping it. <laughs> I have to pull things like extra paint if you go too dark too fast. Uh, let's see. And I would like to actually clean off. I'd kind of like to clean off my area before I start mixing things. And I like to try and preserve an area in my palette for, um, oops, got water on here. I like to preserve in my, an area on my palette for darks and then for lights. So I'm going to start with ultramarine blue and then a little bit of burnt umber for my dark. So, and let's see, let's test it here to see. That's a nice dark. And in some places you'll see on this thing, like his legs have a lot of like fairly, fairly darkish looking spots, but there'll be other places where it's going to be a little bit browner. So you may want to tint this more brown or um, brown or blue. So this first mix I want you to practice once again, 
is ultramarine blue. There, and I'll get to oh boy, it just is not great plus. So alt blue plus burnt umber equals dark. So this is the first mix I'd like you to practice. Oh, Emma, nice. Very nice. I really like that dark mix, Leah. I've been using it this week and um, it works really nicely. It's nice, isn't it? It's very warm dark. It's like a warm dark because we're using warm blue and a warm brown. Well, and I like how you can turn it to sway either the warmer brown the, part. Or the bluer or the browner, I agree. It's my go-to. It's one of my go-to darks. I really love it. Um, and I'm looking here, I'm glad that's working for you. And, and, but you know, and if you want something more dramatic, you can do the Alizar and Crimson and Viridian Green. That's a kind of, a, a sort of more uh, sharp crystalline dark, which is also kind of nice. Uh, let me see here. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's these kind of, I'm just looking up close. Well, he's much pinker. He's very pink, I think, because of the sunset. Mm -hmm. There's more pink in here. I see that too. I'm going to try a couple of different things. So straight, straight um, burnt sienna is not going to work. I wonder what burnt sienna with it. So I'm going to try it. burnt sienna with just a touch of blue. Not a lot, but a touch. I like that. So for the darker kind of mid tones, like along his back, we're going to try burnt sienna with a little bit of. So let me mix this and then show you. Um, we're going to try a little bit of burnt, uh, more burnt sienna and a tiny, uh, notice here I'm, I'm taking, I'm picking up just a tiny corner of blue to mix into my burnt sienna. And that, maybe I need a little bit more, not too, not half, it's like, I feel like the dark mix is more like half and half, but this is really a subtle muting. Yeah, I like that. And the other question is, what happens if we add in a little? Yeah. Is this for the mid tones or the dark tones on that body? I'm mixing, I'm practicing on mid tones right now. Okay. Because there's really just dark mid tones and then lights. So I'm looking to see what the mid tones are. I haven't, I'm, find, I'm finding some things I like, but I'm just trying to come up with a formula here. So believe it or not, virtually everything. It, that's colored on this on this guy is going to have some variation of a little bit of blue in a brown. There's nothing, and perhaps a little bit of yellow. Let's see. Yeah, even better. Yeah. 
Yeah, so for the midtones, I'm going to suggest burnt sienna, a touch of burnt umber, sorry, a touch of ultramarine blue, a little bit more. Water it down a little bit so it's not so intense. And then um, in the lightest, like sort of colored areas, you're going to add a little bit of, of ochre. So let me write that down. So this is burnt sienna. This is ultramarine blue. And together, you get a lot of the mid-tone. That's dark. You can lighten it. And in the light mid tones, you're going to add a touch to that basic mix. You're going to add a touch of yellow ochre or gamboge. So everything is going to have a tiny bit of grayed color, meaning a little bit of color with the complement in it. And of course, we're going to layer very lightly. Um, for the back areas, definitely we're going to go blue, with touches of brown, but more blue. The back areas have almost a greeny blue to them. I wonder if phthalo might be a better. Choice. Okay, I'm going to add, I'm going to, we're going to test this. Just a little bit of phthalo blue. Phthalo or P T H A L O, phthalocinine blue is insane. Oops. But might be able to give us 
Oh yeah, it's really phthalo blue. So let me show you phthalo blue on its own. So phthalo blue on its own, it's definitely there's phthalo blue happening back there with perhaps just a touch of burnt sienna. So you'll wanna use phthalo blue. Look at the subtle differences between what happens when you add just a little bit of the complement in. It's a really, it's, it's toting back. It keeps the main color, but it pushes it back just slightly, which is very often what you need in nature. Almost all of nature is kind of a toned down things. There are very few bright colors. I mean, there's lots of bright colors depending on where you are, but like a lot of, even in places that seem like there's a lot of vibrant color, it's often surrounded by neutral colors. Uh, for example, all greens, regardless uh, in nature, virtually, regardless of whether they are plant or you're in the tropics or whatever, have a touch of red in them. That's the compliment to green. All right, you guys, stop where you're at. Take a picture and uh, we're gonna start. Uh, and I would like to see you practice some, send me some painting mixing based on the three mixes I sent you. Oops. If you feel like you just wanna do that and then if you want me to look at your paint mixes, I'm happy to if you feel like it makes sense. At the end, by the end of class, all of this area will be all filled up. It's testing. Let's see. Nice. Ooh, I like that Quinn Rose. Yeah, I'm thinking for his body, I'm just gonna do all the left-hand side there with variations on Yeah, yeah, I like that. These are great. I like these, this is working for me. Yep, burnt umber, very nice. Yeah, and, it, and Prussian will also, Prussian has a little bit of phthalo in it, so it's nice because it's not so crazy. I don't have, nice, Melissa. I don't have phthalo, so that's my sub. Yeah, that totally works. That okay. totally works. Phthalo is kind of unpredictable. All right, let's see, Rosa. What can we do? Kind of going through it. So. I think you need to dark. I think you need to dark. Here, hold on, let me show you this. I think you really need to darken this area way more. It's the mm -hmm. darkest part, and that's going to help. And really pay attention to this shape. Mm -hmm. Right, that's going to help you. Also, that's looking good. I feel like you've lost his ear on this side. So mm -hmm. sketch out, there's a couple of lines that show the ear. Here, I'll take a close up so you can see. Also your, um, I, it's not as bad as you think. Here, I'm gonna take a close up so you can really see the ear things. Uh, it's easy to kind of make, I think the eye's okay, but get in these shapes mm -hmm. and darken here and I think you're gonna feel better. Okay. Mm -hmm. The darks almost always help doing them first because they interact with the lights, mm -hmm. right? So those two shapes kind of shape things up as opposed to starting with like mid-tones. Right. You get your darks in. There we go. And you'll find at varying points, you'll be like, I'm doing great. And then you'll have a class where you'll be like, Jesus, I can't see anything. What's going on? If I learned anything. <laughs> and then you'll realize 
oh my god <laughs> i'm tired or often when there's a little bit of confusion it's because you're integrating more deeply the concept i'm assuming this is how we feel as kids when we're learning things too and that's why babies cry all the time <laughs> Babies cry. We just forget how hard it is to like say, learn how to read. <laughs> but babies don't forget. <laughs> They're like, wow, this sucks. <laughs> I can't say what I mean. <laughs> is anybody ready for me to start painting? Yes. All right, let's do this. As usual, I'm going to my trusty um, ha a quarter in half inch Escoda Perla Synthetica Barcelona brush. You can see it kind of comes up to a point, so it's got a flat edge, uh, but the brush is the it, it's not ragged. The brushes tend to go together, which means I can make I can make you know straight lines and I can do strong you know I can cover big areas so this is my go-to brush um, let me look at you let me see air color and as usual I'm going to go to the darkest areas first so and I'm, I've got him here so I'm mixing ultramarine blue and burnt umber together over here. And then I'm, I'm dipping it in a water to mute it just a little bit to make it a little bit lighter. Um, because even though I'm laying in my darks, I kind of want them to be, I don't want them to be so dark yet. And I'm moving around. Yeah, and I've tested here. I like this, this is a good dark. I want to be careful. There's a little light spot here, kind of in between these two. And I'm moving around the whole figure. There's a lot of dark in the legs. It's a little bit browner in the legs, so I'm I'm pulling in a little bit more brown in my mix here. What strange creatures reindeer are. I'm, I'm finding I'm using the edge of my brush a lot. I don't know if you guys are catching that. But that's happening. Like Melissa said, it's very, these shapes are very strange. So the best thing you can do <laughs> I love it. This is always the sort of this thing looks like a jigsaw puzzle. I'm gonna come up to the top. As my paint starts to wear out, there are areas at the top that are dark also, the outside of the ear, the edge of the ear here. And I've got a little bit less paint on my, and I mean, I can go into the eye, although I will definitely have to go back. So as I wear out the paint, I may go into the areas where there's a little bit more nuance, try to get in a little bit of color. I'm, I'm staying away from the mid-tones right now, just going with the darks. A little bit around this edge. Then I'm going to try and mix in some of these medium tones, and that's like here. 
and here and in up in here and maybe a little bit on the side of the face. So I'm going to go to burnt sienna and a touch of blue. Let's see, test it here. Oh, I want to clean my brush a little bit. Or burnt sienna. Touch of blue. Testing here. Yeah, I think that's in pretty good shape. I may want to also water it down just a little bit more. And then I'm kind of coming in here. And there's kind of a bit of the haunch here. Oh, you can see it's already drying. I'll probably definitely have to darken up this area. But I know, and the sort of bottom parts of the ear. And I'm starting to run out of uh, color. So my I'm getting lighter. So I'm going into some of the areas of the leg that have slightly lighter. While still preserving the lightest parts. I can see also that he's got like, it's kind of, this light area here and around the eye, I should probably have here. Okay, so this is something I probably should have done. I should have erased that line here. Well, don't try to erase it while it's dry. We'll see what I can do. You may want to erase this line first before you get into that stuff. There's also a kind of orangey, color up in here, let's see. Yep, there's like mid-tone here. And also, I can pull it down a bit. It's funny how this point, it always has this kind of spotted look to it. I'm going to go back and darken a lot of these areas, but I want to lay down. And as I come down here, I'm going to add more. I'm going to mix something with a little bit of yellow ochre in it. So I'm going to take that other mix or yellow or gamboge, new gamboge, little totally work. Um, so it's still got a little bit of blue and it's still got some burnt sienna in it, but it also has some yellow ochre and it's light. I'm lightening it a lot. I want it to be a little bit, I might put a little quinacridone in there too. That's a lot of colors, but. So hang on, I wonder if I just did burnt sienna and ochre. I might actually, so this is what I'm gonna start with actually. On this light kind of part here, I'm going to start with just yellow ochre and burnt sienna or, or new gamboge, but light, very light, no blue in it, but just a very light layer, so that it appear that it sort of appears a little warmer. It comes up here, and there's a little circle of light, kind of around the face. here too. And you know, uh, Marcel, I like, I'm really liking that Quinn, the Quinn that you've pulled in, particularly over here. So I'm pulling in a little bit of Quinn to that yellow mixture. Because there is little bits of pink. in these parts.
In fact, there's really very little white. Although he seems like he's got a lot of it. There's very little that's actually properly white. His antlers are definitely, I'm going to switch to a small pointy brush. Antlers are definitely yellow ochre and burnt sienna. You want it to be a kind of yellowy, golden, orange. In places it's a little bit darker. We'll add that in. What a beautiful creature. All right, let me stop and take a picture at this point. Little patchwork dude. Oh my God, you guys are so awesome and mellow today. <laughs> Must be end of the year. End of the year vibes or something. Go ahead and send stuff over if you guys want me to look at it. going to get up and make myself a cup of tea really quick. So I will be back shortly.
How are we doing? How you doing? I'm gonna start working on the background in a little bit, but I wanted you guys to catch up. Let's see. Nice, Melissa. Beauteous. crazy look in her eye, that crazy <laughs> kitten look. <laughs> you got me better away from my brush. <laughs> Melissa, we finally had a moment. We had 45 minutes last night where, where um, Luca and um, Hermes were together and he did not jump on her. Yay. 45 minutes. It was amazing. He's learning. Mm -hmm. Nice, Leah. Mm -hmm. I thought it was never going to happen. Look at that crazy. Oh, nice, Marcel. Mm -hmm. I think that. Let's see. Nice. I'm going to be careful about not going too dark. This plank is pretty light. Looks good, you guys. It's funny, watercolor is really like one shot. There's some correcting you can do, but it's definitely a tricky medium. I like those bits of blue, Emma, that you're waving into this and I th these areas. And I think that's uh, important. Oh, cool. Well, thank you. Yep. Very important. This re They're really sort of blue light. They're sort of like light. They're not really gray. They're sort of grayish blue. I like that. That's working. OK. I kind of want to go into the face now and get a little bit more detail. So let me call up the picture again. So now I'm moving over to my, I've got it up high here. I'm moving over to my pointy brush. So there are these dark and then kind of light areas on either side of the, um, of the eye. So I'm going to mix some ultramarine blue and burnt umber as usual. But I'm gonna try and leave 
So there's kind of a, a dark area on top, but it comes over this light. There's two light areas. You can sort of see the white of his eyes. Here. So I'm trying to leave a little space of white or lighter on either side. And then he's got some, there's some like dark areas. So I'm basically taking my basic dark mix with a, li a little bit more tinted towards brown. There's like a dark area up here. There's, there's a light area in between. kind of darker here. His eye kind of comes down on this side. When you look really close like this, you can see, you can't really see the eye itself. You can more see the, um, the outer lid of the eye. Better not to think about what it is. <laughs> and just try to get the shapes. So it comes down like this and it's light. It's kind of where the dark is happening. I'm going to re darken this part of his nose because that's super dark. There's also a little bit of dark. And I might go back over with a darker colored pencil or even a charcoal marker, but I'm adding some darks. Not everywhere, but on the kind of outer edge of one side of the hoof. Side that's really, or the, the horns, the sides that's really kind of pointed away from the sun. And then there's a little dark edge here. And this reindeer is definitely smiling. <laughs> so there's a little triangle here. And then there's a bit of white here, which needs to be preserved. But look at this. Look at this little dark shape here. Oh, hi, little guy. And then even kind of down like this. And then there's a little bit of, uh, and then some, so notice how I'm, I'm kind of brushing over some darker markings. 
while trying to keep the lighters. And although this is mostly white, it's a tiny bit blue. There's a tiny blue tint to it. So I might try, let's see if I can pull this off. I'm gonna do this and then if it doesn't work, don't do it. <laughs> it's like here, the, so right, you notice how Emma has a couple of places like here where she's got a kind of little bit of light blue. Uh, yeah, that'll work okay. I'm bringing in a little bit of light blue just in some of the shadow areas on this side of the face. Yeah, I like how that's looking. Moving up to the ear with my dark mix. My face dark mix coming up here, and I'm adding a. I'm sort of tinting it a little bit more on the blue side. So now I want to try and get a little bit of ear shaping in. and a slightly lighter blue in the top of the ear here. Yeah, there we go. I might also brush in a little bit of light blue, that same light blue on this side, down here, a little bit down here. A little bit here. This is all kind of this a light blue wash and some of the light areas that are a little bit in shadow. Oh and I forgot there's a whole dark area I didn't get down here. Need to get that black leg, a little white line. Also going to take a little water to try and create some blending. So I'm just kind of dipping my brush in the water and, and doing a little bit to wet and do a little blending with this sort of medium color over the different areas so they don't look so blocky. Oops, that might be too dark. I maybe want to switch back to my other brush for this. It's starting to look a bit more defined. Might have gone a little too dark here. Send a picture of where this is at. I'd like to go into the background now. This is a point where it can really help us sort of define. The background is an important key of any painting or drawing. 
it's funny we think of it as like well it's background so how can it be important but of course we know Background is, is part of the subject in a way. So I'm gonna be looking at those blue mountains in the background. Now is a good time to get them in. So I'm going in with phthalo or Prussian, if you don't have phthalo. Phthalo with a touch of uh, burnt sienna and a little bit watered down. And I can see, boy, that's still too dark here. Too, too dark, way too dark. Boy, a lot of phthalo really goes a long way. A little bit of phthalo really goes a long way. And I'm leaving, and I'm laying in color, but I'm leaving in a little bit of white for the snow. Can you see how I'm kind of leaving these shapes in? And I'm going with as light a color as possible. Up over here. bit here because there's these dark this dark area underneath I'm going to want to get in and then this dark area is really very brown and blue so I'm taking burnt umber and ultramarine blue again I tried in true dark but I'm skewing it a little bit more brown so I'm mixing more burnt umber in maybe even a touch of burnt sienna So this helps me kind of ground the figure. I'm going to get up to about, I don't know, I guess it's all the way through. There's a couple of dark lines coming through and it's a little bit darker here. I may not be able to get there yet because it's still wet. And then it's interesting, there's these kind of scrubby, how do we want to do that? Still using, I'm using burnt sienna now, burnt sienna and ultramarine because they're a little bit lighter. And I want to be careful. I'm not sort of I'm not just doing little soldiers. I'm sort of randomly leaving some spaces. It's coming up into here, and here's where that really 
plays in it's a tree line here. The back hills are even lighter. The phalo and a touch of burnt sienna, but super light, like super, super light, almost white. Let's see. Nope, too dark. Way too dark. There we go. I want this in. <clears throat> This side of the mountain has a little pink sheen on it. So I'm going to leave it. Now I can start playing around with what that pinch, that pink color is. So I may even clean up my, wait here. Notice how as we start to get in the background, this guy starts coming forward and bothering us a little bit less, right? If you start to add in the background. So when you start to get to where you're like, I don't know how to get any more in. Okay, so there's like quinacridone and maybe ochre. Let's see what happens if I do that. I like it. So I started with well, it might be too dark. Oh, and I can see, hold on, let me adjust my light. So it's not glaring. Give me a second. Oops. didn't turn out as yellow as I wanted it. So maybe I might move to a brighter yellow and pink. So I want something that's a little bit oranger. Maybe what I really have to do is change out my water. So I'm probably gonna take this moment to switch my water out. So I wanna get something that's a little bit glowy. And I think um, my, other, my gray water is kind of mixing with whatever I put in there. brush. Let's see if I can get some better pinker tones in here. I need to clean out everything. Kind of pinky. I want more yellow. So I'm going right into other yellows. So I would say we're we're going for more of an orangey pink. Change a little bit of red. 
Mm, that's a little bit better. It's dark. Still having that flying issue What's going on there. Okay, I can go there. Also shift this color more pink if you want to, or more orange, depending on what you prefer. Yeah. There we go. We do know is it's definitely more yellow. Orangey towards the base here. Yellows. We want to kind of scrub this edge with water because what happens after this is that it gets bluer. So we're going to go for a very light phthalo wash, uh -huh. super light. I'm using a lot of water here. And where my color meets the other color, this yellow, kind of doing a little scrubbing and a little swirling motion so that there's a little bit of blending going on, right? The transition isn't like a straight line. Running out of room for testing. I'll pull out again in a second and show you guys what I mean. Oops, sorry. Here. So can you see how I'm, oh yeah, my blue is, because I'm working at an angle, my blue is kind of working. My blue is bleeding into my other colors, which isn't ideal. I can live with it, but I'm hoping you guys are working flat. So it's not as much of a problem for you. Generally with landscapes, as the sky goes higher, it gets a little bit darker in the daytime, but also at night. So that's the appearance for us. So if you want to add a little bit more pigment to your brush towards the top, you can, but also soften that edge between the darker and the lighter. It looks kind of nice.
So I forgot to kind of erase out my construction lines. <laughs> I'm gonna at least do that down here. Get rid of some of them. And to me, this white, this sort of light, you know, front area is just a very watered down kind of bluish gray. So once again, I'm mixing, I'm trying phthalo with a little bit of orange. Let's see how that looks, yeah. And I'm also maybe leaving a little bit of light. Oops, get all your brush shavings off before you start painting. You might layer one or two, two blues. I might, you might try both a little bit of phthalo and a little bit of ultramarine. I'm a little bit too dark there, so I'm watering it down with water. I'm dipping my brush in the water and then just going right back in. If you're using tube paint, there may be a couple of areas where you might want to actually try some wet white. In general, we don't use white, but sometimes you can add little highlights and things afterwards. So hold on, let me I'm gonna pull back a little bit. So you can see, look at that, all that bloody testing. I need to get more darks in here so that he kind of comes forward because right now notice how this edge is not really pushing forward it's kind of fading into the background and that's because these are the too much the same value. I also want to get myself a little bit of white. Let's see if I can do anything. Where are you white? Oh, here you are. bit of white, wet white here. Okay. Put this up here so you guys can see it. My white, my wet white is like right here. So the first thing I want to do is go back in here and darken. I'm going to go back and Make some more burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Kind of darken this edge. And drag it down a little bit. I want the edge to be kind of sharp towards the edge of the back where the back meets the sky. Can you see that? Because I want that to be a distinct kind of contour line. Everything else can be sort of soft. So I might drag down a little bit of color in here. I feel like I want a little bit more orange. So I might put in some basic burnt sienna. Kind of right in here. I don't think so. I want a little bit of orange up in here. Let me take 
my little tiny brushes. See if I can load it with a little bit of the white with no, the wet white with no, you can't really do this with pat with the pans. So if you don't have the pans, you know, hold on, let me look at this just to make sure. Has we, have we already done almost, we've almost already done three hours. This is ridiculous. So much more to do. Um, hold on. There are a couple of areas where it might be nice to have a little, whoops, there's a lot of white. You want your area to be dry. I want this area to be a little bit here. Do so you see how I'm kind of using, I'm adding like straight white that has not been wet? It'll dry a little bit, but it gives you a little bit more back of your white areas. I think that's going to work out nicely. It also might work in here a little bit. Only works with tube paint. So if you've got the pats, it probably won't help you so much. Give a little texture. I don't think it needs it many places. I just think it needs it basically, basically around the eyes. When this is dry, I can go in and darken again. I'll wait till it dries. In the meantime, I want a little bit of a feeling of fur. So I'm actually going to take some white and some of the burnt sienna mixture come in and do a few brushes. Uh, yeah. Couple areas. So this is white with a little bit of burnt sienna mixed in. Not any water really. just to add a little floof. Where else is there fuzzy? I kind of lost my line here. So let's see, can I totally cheat and put my white back in? We will see. And I continue to go around kind of darkening areas that need to be darkened even more. I think that worked, that white worked really nicely to kind of preserve some of the white of his nose. So white is like one of those things in watercolor. In general, not something to rely on, but every once in a while it can be kind of helpful. Oh yeah, I wanna make this darker. And then this really dark. I 
Once again, returning to that edge here. Hold on and I'll be right over. Let me look. Sometimes you'll find that you're going to darken things that aren't really happening in the photograph as a way to make sort of push the picture forward. That is okay. There's a tough part where we depart. Let me take a look. Oh, Marcel. Yeah. So try a kind of darkish line around here. Yeah, I'm noticing that too. Kind of yeah, like and a little bit of a ragged kind of make it go just in a few areas and here as well. Or put in your sky and let's have you. Oh, I see you've got your sky in. Um, and also, just looking to see. Try getting a little bit darker around the eye up here. Uh huh. Between okay. the eye and the ear. Yeah. I like how this eye is working. I like how this ear is working, but this needs to be a little bit darker. I absolutely love the shaping that you've got going here. Gorgeous. Really gorgeous. Let's see. Melissa. Oh, good God. Emma. <laughs> Oh, great. Rosa. Excellent. Yeah, it is really challenging, isn't it? I'm looking and thinking this shape feels, I think his legs feel a little bit high. Let me check and I'll mm -hmm. you. There's more, there should be more. Can you bring this down a little bit? This shape down a little bit? Can you see how he's kind of scrunched up here? Oh yeah, yeah, so I see this it. Now. Has to come down, but that's not a do. But your face is looking pretty good. Also, there's a very big white area here, so you mm -hmm. should go in with your eraser and pull that out. And also in here and there. Got it. Okay. So try and make those corrections. Um, I have to head yeah, out a little bit early, but this was so much fun. Thank you so much. I'm so glad. Are you going to join us again? Oh yeah, I'm so excited for the uh, drawing classes that are starting. That's gonna be great. Yeah, absolutely. So you could totally do drawing in any of the paintings, but you might as well just jump into drawing if that works for you. And then you can join painting when you feel ready. Sounds good. Or Thank do you. both. <laughs> okay, Rosa, nice to see you. Well, uh, I'll let you guys know if we're gonna have a class next week. I'm, I'm thinking not. Oh, very nice, Rebecca. Great return. She is back. <laughs> it's funny because this is a light side, but I feel like this needs a little bit of a dark edge. Wonderful. Wonderful. Great drawing, Rebecca. Also really appreciating it. Have I missed anybody? Oh my. Let me, let me send over a picture of where this is now. Move this down just a little bit. Surprisingly challenging, right? There's my guy. I cannot even show it. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> it's tough. I have a student who always says, not nobody here, but who always says, um, I never expect to do anything good in class. <laughs> like, and it's a really healthy attitude because she's, you know, she, you're learning in class. So you're trying and trying to reach and failing, right? Here's a close up of the face. Yeah. Nice, you guys. Great work.
sorry, let me put this up. At this point, one might be try to go in with maybe some charcoal, a charcoal pencil, or maybe a watercolor pencil. Uh, maybe back here too, like to kind of add a little structure to these mountains back here, or you might like it kind of soft and I think you guys are doing amazing. Notice if you go too dark, right? It's easy. Easy to go too dark. We're gonna take five more minutes to work. And then I want you, I'm gonna add, we're gonna go, we're gonna meet and have a slight conversation, a small conversation with whoever is left. I'm gonna ask you the same questions. Let me push this. Marie, look what I'm drinking out of. <laughs> it's my teacup now. I know. I got. I need to get Rebecca's to her. Yes, definitely not my coffee cup because if I had this much coffee, I'd be flinging all over the place. <laughs> It'd be a disaster. Oh, I drink so much coffee. I know it's insane, right? I yeah. I probably <laughs> should. I should cut down. I had to. You'll get to an age, you're not there yet, but you'll get to an age where you have to if you want to do art because your hand shakes too much. Just oh. like literally, you physically <laughs> shake like an old person. <laughs> oh gosh. I really love the, um, I love the, what do you call it? The, the kick that coffee gives you. It's really necessary for me. I don't know about you guys, I need it in the morning. But then I try to avoid it like the plague because otherwise it just gets too crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, Molly. Oh, Molly. Um, Marie, how, what, you, what are you working on today? You want to send us a picture? Sure. I'm working, trying to finish this painting. Let's see. Send it over. And um, <laughs> lots of trees. Lots of trees. Lots of trees. Ah, yes. And uh, yeah. So, okay. Uh -huh. Hey, Leah. <laughs> That's a dog going, mom, 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 mom. So nice, Rebecca, very sweet. Thank you. I was going to uh, send you my elephant picture I'm working on. Please send it over. Just a couple more minutes. Oh, Marie, that's really coming along nicely. Lots of trees. I see your point. <laughs> I like this guy. I love this guy. It's different you. than anything you've ever done. Yeah, I'm wondering. Yeah, like it's lots of glazing. Uh, I probably have like four glazes over it. Yeah, and the alcohol inks are really yeah. influencing your the mark making that you use in these these cups. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. It's really neat. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, Jess, better than you think. Don't worry. Let's see. 
Oh, okay. that turned out really well, Rebecca. Let me see. I don't know. I think you've worked it out really. It's it's adorable. What are you working with? Acrylic paint? Acrylic. I might. What would I do? I don't know. I really like it. I was debating over. I like this white line that you have on the right on what's our on our right side. You know, around the edge of the elephant to kind of oh, push, yeah, I had, push I it had forward. A, yeah, I had a white outline out over the whole thing. It kind of got painted over as I. It got painted yeah. over, but you know, you can still see it, which yeah. is nice, or you can still feel that the line is there, mm -hmm. and so that helps the elephant come forward in this background. Yeah, I like it. I don't know. I don't really have. I don't really have any suggestions. <laughs> um, wait, let me look up close. <laughs> He's so cute. How about, okay, this is the only thing I would suggest. How about with purple glaze the shadow areas of the elephant so that only the shadow areas so mm -hmm. that there's a little bit of um, distinction between the, there's a sort of a little darkening between the shadow areas and the light areas. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So shadow areas of the ear, shadow areas of the, so try a purple glaze, the bottom of the trunk there. Yeah. Try a purple glaze just over the shadow areas to slightly darken everything that's in the shadow side. All right. Um, and to mute it a little bit. Okay. Oh, this is good. Nice, great work. All right, everybody, send in their pieces if you want to. If you want to, uh, I'm going to remove the spotlight. I want you to go into gallery view so we can all see each other. And I want you to tell me. We're going to go in turn. I'm going to start with Emma since she hasn't been here in a while. I'm going to say so. Uh, unmute yourself, my sweet. Um, I want you to tell me, Emma, two things that you learned in class today. Two things that you think you did well. Okay. Or um, learned, doesn't have to be learned, but two things that you did well in class today. Did well, okay. Um, I did these like textured areas in the mountains and I'm really happy with how these turned out. I just like dabbed it on with the brush. Yeah. Yeah, and then like, um, I think something I wanted do next time is um, go like a little bit slower when I start building up my darks because I think I went too dark too fast. Mm -hmm. So, so that's to, something like, you want to keep for excellent. So that was my next question was yeah. what do you want to work on and what do you mm -hmm. like that you did in this particular case? Very nice. Yeah. Um, Auntie Laren, can you say what did you like that we haven't seen it? I'll let you wait till last. <laughs> Because we haven't seen anything of yours yet. Rebecca, what did you do that you liked this time in this in your painting? Um, well, I did use, I used a mixture of watercolor <coughs> and ink. So I liked how some of the colors turned out. When I okay, did, excellent. Did so the mixing was good. Water. And what did you think you could maybe work on? Um, I'm, I feel like I'm not very good at landscape, so mountain stuff it didn't it looks really amateur -y. getting more <laughs> detail there. yeah detail without too much detail i guess got it okay no, excellent yeah. jessica what do you think you like about your painting you gotta give me one thing um i think that i tried to draw you know to try the the arena is so hard it was so hard it, yes I, I just started with the painting like 30 minutes ago because it took me almost two hours to. Yes, yes, the drawing. You worked really hard with the drawing. So you got some improvement. You feel like you had some improvement in the drawing. And then yeah. what did you think, what do you think you can work on? Keep drawing, keep drawing. And Excellent, excellent. Anything. Because if you can't draw, you can't paint. Exactly. <laughs> right. So like it's the it's funny to be a painter, a good painter, you gotta be able to draw. Exactly. I believe me, I feel your pain. <laughs> Melissa, what do you think you did well today? What are you happy with? I really like the color mixing. It was really fun. And I think that I've learned a lot from you with that. 
Yeah. And what about uh, something you'd like to keep working on? I don't think my, like the face was very successful. I wish that, I don't know. I need to work on stuff like, I think it's- Do you, uh, from a drawing perspective or a painting perspective? Um, both maybe, I don't know. Painting, both, I'm not sure. Uh, so you think you could work on improvement on maybe drawing and face painting? Okay. I mean, I'm not used to this type of subject. It's kind of a weird subject for me. So I guess I don't have a lot of experience in it and it kind of shows. Oh yeah, 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 I can see it. Yep, a few drawing problems that translated into painting what? problems. A, a couple of drawing problems that translated into painting problems. I like how you handled the hair on the base of him. I thought that turned out really well. So I have this pen that I really love. It's called a Signo Uniball mm -hmm. white gel pen. And that's what I use. Nice. It, it smudges out easily. Nice. Marcel, tell me, what is something that you're happy with? Uh, in today's exercise. I can't hear. Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute. There we I go. Said the, sorry about that. Thank you. I said the drawing. I'm proud of my drawing because yes. um, I never do animals ever. Yeah, you nailed it. And um, I usually do landscapes because I don't have to draw. <laughs> so I am a, um, I'm a short cutter I'm an eyeballer and so I'm trying to do the pinching method throughout the drawing and I think it helped I mean excellent I, it was like quarter after one before we started I started to paint and I and that's never, pretty much before I started to paint too I so never, like yeah so I want to do more of that more drawing. Well, and you asked me, I want to point out that you asked me a, like three or four lessons ago, uh, how do you eyeball something? Like, how do you do that? So I feel like you're picking up what it takes to actually be able to do that. I agree. Drawing has improved greatly. Um, uh, let's see. Andy, do you want to chime in here? What is one thing you think you did well? We haven't seen your, your painting. You might have worked on this assignment or something else. I, I was working on this and then I realized I got my measurements wrong, which made my uh, reindeer enter a funhouse mirror. So, uh... <laughs> so that's something one could work on, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> proportions. So I, and I was frustrated because I was, I was super measuring and I just right. had one, I had one measurement off and it threw off everything. So there you go. All right, so you got everything right, but one measurement. So that's something yeah. you got right, but also something that you could improve. I like it. All right, you guys, um, I will let you know whether there is a class next week. Um, but I think everybody did really, this is a very challenging subject. And starting uh, in the first week of January, Marie will have a landscape class for, we're calling this for intermediate and advanced students. Um, you're welcome to jump in, but like she is, she is moving. She's either gonna, she's probably gonna be starting with pastel or going to oil. Uh, they'll go back and she'll go back and forth between oil. So you could do an acrylic painting or an oil painting, or of course you could do a watercolor painting, but she will not be showing you the watercolor mixing for that. Um, but it will be landscapes uh, at nine o'clock on Saturday morning, uh, sorry, Sunday morning, and then we'll be on starting with acrylic painting. Awesome work, you guys. Great, great work. Really it's really great. Good to see everybody. If you would like a copy of this video, let me know. I'm happy to send it along. I would. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you soon. <laughs>